Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. Today, we're gonna to talk about something a little bit different. We're gonna cover some screen used 18 vans and fall guy trucks. What happened to them and where they are today? And we're also gonna answer the question, why on earth are we talking about the 18 van and the fall guy trucks on a Knight Rider channel? Stay tuned. Be sure to take a peek at our exclusive merch, not found anywhere else, like our Knight Rider Historians and Semi-Restoration Team branded apparel, along with our line of Garthware, trademark pending. T-shirts, hoodies, even coffee mugs in a variety of colors and styles to suit every taste. Your purchase directly supports this channel and helps us to continue bringing you awesome content. View the merch below this video and click on the link in the description for our entire catalog. All right, guys. So, yes, I know this is a Knight Rider channel. So why are we gonna talk about the 18 vans and the Fall Guy trucks? All right, let me give you a little backstory on this. Um, many of you who have been following the channel know about the Vista Group. We've talked about the Vista Group many times in the past. For those of you who aren't familiar, the Vista Group was a product placement firm um, started in the mid 70s by a man named Eric Dahlquist. Um, and it ran through uh, about 2012, 2013, somewhere around that when um, the business closed down. Now, their, the Fister Group's main focus was vehicle placements in movies and television shows and other special events. Specifically, they had contracts over the years with Pontiac, with GMC, with Oldsmobile, uh, Mercedes-Benz, and... Um, you know, really for all these shows that we love, not just Knight Rider, but the A-Team, the Fall Guy, um, Dukes of Hazzard, you know, all this stuff. Um, the Vista Group had their hand in it, you know, and I'm not just talking about the main vehicles. I'm talking about background vehicles as well, bad guy vehicles, things used maybe only for one episode. Um, the Vista Group, chances are, were involved. So you guys know many years ago, we we um, met and made friends with the with Eric Dahlquist at the Vista Group and some of the other people that worked at the Vista Group. Um, when Eric passed away a number of years ago, we kind of quote unquote un inherited or became the caregiver of a lot of the Vista Group's files. One of those things that we um, that we have is one of their ancient computer systems from the 1980s that had their vehicle database in there. Now the vehicle database contained VIN numbers for thousands of vehicles that they placed in movie and TV shows. So um, that's how we found the flag semi tractor because it's a GMC and it was in this database. So we would not have the tractor and honestly the trailer without the Vista group and without them trusting us with um, their historical records. So, but one of the other things that we found in this database, besides a lot of these nondescript, you know, one episode cars that really probably no one cares about, we also found a plethora of information on the A-Team vans and the Fall Guy trucks. The A-Team vans, GMC Vandora, and the Fall Guy trucks, the GMC Sierra Grandes, right? Um, those were all placed on those shows by the Vista Group. So when we um, unlocked all this data, found all these VINs, we found nine A-Team vans, we found six Fall Guy, or seven Fall Guy truck VINs, and some history behind each one of those trucks, kind of what happened to them after the show ended. Um, now, normally we wouldn't veer off from Knight Rider, you know, to talk about the 18 Fall Guy trucks, but here's the deal. There is no Fall Guy historian. There is no A-Team historian. And when we unlock this data, um, we realize that we are probably the only people 
possibly on this planet that have this information. And it wouldn't be right to just kind of keep it to ourselves. Now, we're not going to, you know, like spew out VIN numbers for you because the one thing we don't want is to create this possible frenzy where people start, you know, going after these vehicles. No, the reason we're talking about this is to kind of let you know from the paperwork we have what, what, what happened to these vehicles because a lot of people have questions about that and a lot of Knight Rider fans are A-Team fans, Fall Guy fans, things like that. It's kind of what happened to them and also for any of you watching out there that think you might have an A-Team van or a Fall Guy truck or have seen one and you have a VIN and you want to know if, if we have record of it. This is our invitation to you to reach out to us with that VIN and we will either verify that we have it or not. Um, but beyond that, uh, we also did find uh, some Knight Rider VINs and I'm not talking about uh, Trans Ams, unfortunately. Um, although we did find we did find some uh, of the uh, some documentation on the original three Trans Am, but none of the like train wreck Trans Am VINs or anything like that, which is a shame. But there are um, quite a few VINs of some of the background vehicles that were used in Knight Rider. So we will go over those as well and kind of tell you what happened to them, what other shows they were used in, things like that. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're, if you're interested in the A-Team van, the Fall Guy truck, definitely stick with us. But like I said, we are going to cover some Knight Rider vehicles as well. All right. One other thing I wanted to say before we get into this regarding the, um, the database, the Vista Group database, we've had people over the years contact us asking if we had, I don't know, the VIN for Dom's Jeep in Airwolf or, um, I'm trying to think, or like Hardcastle and McCormick, the Coyote VIN, or different different things like that. And 99% of the time, the answer is no, and here's why. Um, the data that we uncovered, and by we, I really mean AJ. AJ was the driving force behind um, all, but behind the acquisition of this data and being able to decode it and all this stuff. Um, so the... The reason that we don't like have a broad spect spectrum of data across all car lines, all movies, all TV shows is because the data that we got was a snapshot in time of the Vista Group. And at that time, the specific computer that we extracted the data from mainly had, I'm talking like 98%, GMCs and Oldsmobiles in it. So if you're looking for something not GMC, not Oldsmobile, chances are we don't have it. We have a few Pontiacs and a few Chevrolets and like that, but the lion's share of the data is GMC and um, an Oldsmobile. So uh, even things like, um, what is it? Riptide had a, a GMC, you know, they had the Corvette, but they also had a GMC, I think it was a Jimmy that popped in every once in a while. We have the information on that. Magnum PI, a lot of people don't remember, um, at least for a few episodes, he had a GMC that he drove around in. Um, we have the VIN for that. Um, we also have the VIN for Howie's truck from the Fall Guy. It was a, it was a red and black step side, I believe. We have the VIN for that and different things. So, um, all that to be said, let's go ahead and dig into some of the data that we have. And, you know, if for nothing else, this kind of gives you an idea of what happened to some of these vehicles. So let's go ahead and let's start with the Fall Guy. All right, so for the Fall Guy, we've got seven different VINs, including the original 1980 GMC that was used in the pilot. Um, Unfortunately, I know I've, I've talked to some Fall Guy aficionados and that was the one that, that they were really interested in. But unfortunately, we have the VIN, but we don't really have any other information um, about that specific one. But um, a lot of the data we have, we can see that these trucks came in brand new. We can see that, um, at least for this first one that we'll cover, was a K25 pickup, a 2500, three quarter ton. Um, and uh, they originally acquired it in, uh, in 1981 with 100 miles on it. So it was a brand new GMC. And we can see through the paperwork that they had this truck, obviously, throughout the entire run of the Fall Guy. And um, 
1985, when the show ended, um, we can see that the truck was sent back to Dick Cepak. Um, Dick Cepak, I believe, now this is, you know, I'm definitely not a Fall Guy historian, but Dick Cepak and a place called Carriage Works did all the modifications for these trucks. And I think Dick Cepak did the tires and maybe the lift and other things. But the evidence we have on all of these trucks is that when the show ended, these trucks went back to this Carriage Works place, went back to Dick Cepak for defall guying meaning they took a lot of these pieces off the trucks and then the trucks were ultimately sold at auction. When were the trucks sold at auction? Um, there's not a specific day. Um, two of them were sold at auction July 10th of 1985. Um, there's other ones that were sold in uh, July 25th, 1985. One was sold April 25th of 1986 and one was sold January 17th of 1986. Um, and so, so all of these trucks from the paperwork we have, like I said, were, uh, demodified, you know, a lot of the fall guy stuff was removed and then they were sold probably as regular used trucks. So my guess is there's a chance some of these trucks were just, um, sold as regular vehicles and, and the owner probably didn't even know they were used on the fall guy. That would be, um, definitely my guess. So we ran... Uh, Carfax reports on all of these VINs. So for the Fall Guy trucks, you know, that original 1980 we talked about and one of the other ones, which was an 81, um, there's no Carfax at all. Now that doesn't mean it was destroyed. It just means um, it, there was no registration events. So it could still be out there. It could be in a museum somewhere. I mean, who knows? Um, so, uh, one of them was has been in California since the late 90s, early 2000s with 183,000 miles on it, um, last registered in June of 2000. One is in Montana um, since the 1990s. Uh, that one actually was in an accident in February of 1999 with another vehicle. It was repaired. And then later that same year in August of 99, it hit an animal. Um, but it was fixed again. It was then repossessed in 2008 and 2010 and last registered in 2012. So um, again, might still be out there in Montana. Another one's in Washington State, spent most of its life in Oregon, and then um, in the mid-2000s went up to Washington State, last renewed in 2015. Um, we've got one in Nevada, last renewed in 2017, and one in Alaska, um, where it's been since the 1990s, last registered in 2003 with 84,000 miles on it. So, um, you know, obviously we don't know, there's no registrations within the last few years, but um, I'm sure some of these still exist. So hopefully one day some original Fall Guy trucks, besides the mid-engine one. Now, um, you know, a couple years ago, uh, there's there's a guy I can't remember his name, but he he found the mid engine truck and has restored it and um, but uh, hopefully there's some more out there besides just that one. So and an interesting note um, also on one of let's see here, I think it's one of Howie's trucks. Yeah, because it's listed as red here. So one of Howie's trucks. There were at least two of them. One of the two was stolen in uh, June of 1983. And I don't know if it was ever recovered. I don't have the information on there, but I do have the note that it was stolen. So that's interesting. All right, so let's move on to the A-Team. So the A-Team, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine VINs um, for the different cars. Now, three of these VINs are for the Universal Studios A-Team stunt show. So in, I think it was 83, 84, Universal put on a, uh, an A-Team stunt show. They needed three vans. They purchased those three vans uh, or acquired them through a local GMC dealer and the Vista Group coordinated and facilitated that whole transaction. So they were all brand new trucks that were converted into A-Team vans. There were never any screen used trucks used for the stunt show because the stunt show was happening at the time the show was in production. So they couldn't afford to give them, you know, any vans. Um, but all the other ones, um, you know, we've got a, uh, a white GMC Vandora, 
um, originally white, obviously, you know, it would be painted, but, um, and then another white one, one was tan originally, one was white, and we can see here that, uh, you know, one of them, it says, went to the A-team December of 1982, and um, was used on the A-team throughout the entire series, sold at auction July 1st, 1985. Um, another one that was originally tan, same thing, sent to the A-team on November 24th, 1982, used throughout the, the whole five seasons of the show, sold again, July 1st, 1985. Um, we've got another one that, um, you know, two more that were, came in later in the series. It looks like maybe in the, uh, third season. It looks like there were two two additional ones that came in, possibly the third season. I'm trying to decode this here. They look like possibly 1980. Yeah, I think they're 1985 models. Um, went to uh, a guy named Bill Went, W-E-N-T. They were painted at his shop and then sent to the A-Team to use in the last couple seasons. Both those trucks were brand new with 31 miles on them whenever the show got them. Um, what else? There's, there's also this white, another white Vandora G25 van used, um, it looks like it was used originally on Beverly Hills Cop and Hardcastle and McCormick, and then it went to the A-Team. Um, yeah, and then um, it was sold at auction also, and uh, one other one used in Scarecrow, um, what else, Cobra. And then it was sent to the A team. So, um, interestingly, one of these trucks, so we did the Carfax on these as well. Um, one spent its entire life in California, uh, regularly being inspected through 2006 with over 100,000 miles on the odometer. Another one is in Arizona. It was in there throughout all the 1990s. And ironically, it was very close to where we found the trailer in Arizona, the Knight Rider trailer. Um, it disappeared after its 1999 registration renewal with 34,000 miles on it. Uh, another one there's no record of. Two other ones are in California. And then um, one of these VINs matches the van that is currently at the Deezerland Museum in Orlando, Florida. So for those of you wondering, there, the van on display there is not a replica. It is a screen-used original A-Team van. So um, if you ever go down there and take a look at it, know you're looking at one of the original ones. And we actually have some of the paperwork for it, which is kind of crazy. Um, and one of the stunt show trucks still exists. Where do we see it? I can't remember. It's in a museum as well. One of the, one of the three stunt show a-team vans. The other two are kind of MIA. All right. If you stuck with us this long, thank you. That's kind of a little history on the A-team and the Fall Guy vehicles that we have. Um, now let's go over a few of the Knight Rider vehicles, the, the background vehicles that you might find interesting. Sure. All right. So we've got a, uh, an S-15 Club Coupe truck. Um, this was, uh, seen in Lost Night. It was, it was Lori Wainwright's tan truck used for the Wainwright nursery. So that truck actually was used, um, in a couple other shows. So it was used on Knight Rider in Lost Night. Then, um, after some maintenance, it went to an episode of Hardcastle and McCormick. I'm not sure what episode it was. Then a show on NBC called Hot Pursuit. Then it was sold in February of 1985. And no information after that. What else do we have? We've got the blue and white Jimmy that we see in White Line Warriors towards the end of the episode whenever um, Mace Beaudry has taken Michael out to the, the cliffs um, to you know have him jump off the cliff. It was used in Knight Rider. It was also used in Airwolf, um, a production called Helltown. It was used in, what else? I guess that's it. And then sold February of 1985. These ones we haven't done the Carfax on yet to see if they're still around, but uh, hopefully they are. What else do we have? A K-15 pickup, a light blue one. So if you remember in Night of a Thousand Devils, there's a scene where Michael just finishes helping um, Ana Lucia Cortez with her Baja vehicle, and he's walking out, and this truck pulls out in front of him and cuts him off, the bad guy truck. 
that is this truck, if you're interested in that. Used first in Airwolf, in an early episode of Air, Airwolf, then was used in Knight Rider, then in, in Misfits of Science, also on NBC, a show by, um, or a show called Undercover, and then it was sold at auction July of 1986. So it's just interesting. All these were, you know, they, they survived the filming of all these shows. They were out there at some point. I don't know if they still are. Um, Oldsmobile Toronado, champagne color, used in um, Night Behind Bars as the car. It was Matt Erickson's car that uh, Julie, you remember at the beginning of the episode, she steals his car. That's this car. It was first used in Hardcastle McCormick in the A-Team, then went to Knight Rider, then went to Simon and Simon, then went to Highway to Heaven then uh, sold December of 1985 as a used vehicle, which is kind of neat. Um, we've got the light blue Cutlass sedan from Santa Rosa. So there's the scene in Santa Rosa's where Michael and Stevie are leaving the restaurant and then that blue uh, Oldsmobile follows them. That um, is the one we're talking about. And after Night Rider, it was used in Moonlighting and then sold uh, February of 1986. So really just a couple months after they filmed that, it was, it was sold off as a used car. Uh, what else do we have? Um, the gray sedan used in Merchants of Death. So remember the scene in Merchants of Death where, um, you know, uh, Camilla is driving Kit, then Michael swaps in, and then the car follows them. That's the car we're talking about here. It was used in, uh, like I said, it was used in Merchants of Death. Then it went in for some maintenance. Then it was used um, in New Heart for a number of episodes, followed by... Um, Oh, I guess that's it. It was used in New Heart through 1985 with 13,000 miles on it. And uh, then it just kind of disappeared. There's no information after that. And finally, um, Deadly Nightshade. There's a red Oldsmobile convertible that uh, Lance Burton, um, Austin Templeton, uses in his act. And he, you know, he makes the lion appear or the tiger appear in, uh, inside that car. That one... Um, came into service in 1983 with 12,000 miles on it. And it was used in Remington Steel, a show called Bikini Shop, um, Fraud Squad at Universal, a Alfred Hitchcock production, something called Pros and Cons at Universal. Then it went to Knight Rider, then Scarecrow and Mrs. Crow. Um, and it looks like it was done July of 1986. So... Um, very, you know, very interesting information. And, you know, it, maybe at some point we'll try and track the, uh, VINs of these cars and see if any of them are still out there because, you know, who doesn't want a, uh, you know, 1986 Oldsmobile convertible that a tiger sat in, right? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, that's the information we have currently. There is some additional stuff we have on the A-Team a and Fall Guy trucks and some of these Knight Rider cars, but that kind of gives you an idea. I promise we're not going to veer off from Knight Rider too often, but I felt like we kind of had a duty to get this information out there. Because like I said, I'm pretty sure no one on this planet has this information. We know Universal Studios doesn't have archival uh, data on any of these vehicles. Um, I doubt uh, Fox, who did uh, uh, 20th Century Fox, who did Fall Guy, I doubt they have anything. So really, this might be some of the only documentation on these original vehicles that are out there. So um, like I said, if you have a, a, a truck or a car or something you suspect was used, especially if it's a GMC or an Oldsmobile, contact us with the VIN. And um, who knows, maybe we can give you some uh, background paperwork to kind of go with that to to um you know add to the provenance of that car all right guys as always thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed this catch you next time